After several hours of fruitless searching for a tortoise this morning, we spotted these extraordinary fungi and were so taken by them that we decided to concentrate on some of the non-animal life in the forest instead. Only once have I come across this species before, and then it was old and partially rotten. We are incredibly lucky to find these ones in perfect condition. The form and structure is just mind-boggling, leaving me utterly confused as to what the story is here. For sure, these fungi produce a fetid odour, and we can clearly see many small insects are attracted to both the net and the cap. How and why it produces this delicate net seems to defy explanation. In places, plants of the ginger family threw up tall stems, and at the base of some of these could be found their unlikely flower, orange and yellow, sitting on the forest floor. I was particularly delighted to find an orchid attached to a fallen bamboo stem, the tiny pink and white flowers hanging down over a small stream. Close by we came across several other forms of fungi, some small greyish blue forms clustered together on a branch that had fallen into a stream. Nearby we were fortunate enough to find one of the last flowers of the season of a parasitic plant whose roots tap into and extract nutrients from the roots of a climbing liana. These flowers are about 10 centimetres across, but this species is related to the famous Rafflesia of Indonesia, whose immense flower can be a metre across. This is the vanilla orchid, a huge rambling assemblage that sprawled over many trees and threw down aerial roots as it went. Here and there a flower of unmistakable orchid form and beauty stood out from the tangle of stems. Typically two or three flowers were produced in succession from the same part of the stem. And here we can see the last flower in the company of its two predecessors now ripened into seed pods.